Let us now commence day two of the Global HR Forum 2021. I hope you are having a great morning. We have started the forum since yesterday. We are continuing to take a look at our sustainable future based on the topic of digital transformation, ESG, and sustainable future. Let us continue the dialogue today. I am Chang San Young. I will be leading you throughout day two as well. Thank you very much. I could see the enthusiasm of the participants yesterday. During the last two years, we have gone through the period of COVID-19. And so I think there was a thirst for discussing our future. Everything is changing very quickly. And so we are faced with various challenges. How would we respond and prepare for the future? And how would we prepare our talent for the future? This is a great opportunity to gather our wisdom. The questions sent to us by the audience also provides us with great insights. We also look forward to enthusiastic lectures and discussions by all of the speakers here today. And we also look forward to the participation of our online audience. The Global HR Forum is being conducted both online and offline. It would have been great to invite more people to the site, but due to the social distancing measures stated by the government, we are not able to invite more people. Perhaps we will be able to have a larger audience on site next year. We will start the day off with special lecture four. Due to climate change, we are experiencing several challenges. And so climate change is a global issue that we must look at together. And therefore, Special Lecture 4 will deal with digital technologies for climate action. We will be inviting Managing Director General Um Woo Jung of the Asia Development Bank for the special lecture. We will meet him via the screen. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. I will be speaking in English. Uh, this is, um, yeah, thank you very much for introducing me. Um, it's 8 o'clock in the morning in Manila, Philippines. So good morning to everybody, um, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Asian Development Bank, it's my pleasure to deliver this presentation on digital technologies for climate. I wish I could have been here uh, joining you in person, but because of the uh, pandemic travel restrictions, it's very difficult to travel. So unfortunately, I'll have to do this online. So the digital technologies can provide opportunities for accelerating and enhancing actions to tackle the biggest challenge of our generation, climate change. This session will present the broad landscape of digital technologies across various stages of technology development, as well as deployment. We will also discuss how these technologies can contribute to maximize climate action. The session will also provide insights on how digital technologies can be identified and applied to help developing countries enhance climate action, achieve their nationally determined contribution, and contribute to their efforts to achieve green recovery. But before I dive, deep, um, dive deep into this presentation, let me first thank the Korea Economic Daily for organizing this year's Global HR Forum, despite the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic. It's really an honor for me, to part, for me to be part of this important event alongside the eminent lineup of speakers. As we all know, the Asian, Asia and the Pacific region is in the forefront of the battle against climate change. On the, on the one hand, our region is responsible for over 50% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So in a sense, Asia and the Pacific can be considered the climate maker and the battle against climate change will need to be won in the Asian region. On the other hand, Asian region is also the climate taker as we will see severe impacts of climate change by way of more frequent floods, droughts, cyclones, and heat waves, which are already impacting livelihoods, food and water security, 
and the health of millions of people in our region. In the recent 2021 Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change report highlights, the global surface temperature will continue to increase until at least the mid-century. Current business as usual policies and actions will lead to a temperature rise of at least 2.9 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial uh, level. And of course, needless to say, all of these have large economic impacts and affect progress towards sustainable development of the region. This is not the future we want to leave to, for our children and grandchildren. The Asian Development Bank was established back in 1966 with a very simple mandate of eradicating poverty from our region. But life was much simpler back then. Everybody, everyone was very poor and everyone needed infrastructure and schools and et cetera. So we just built and built and built without worrying too much about environment or social um, issues. And of course, Korea was one of the biggest um, clients. And one of our flagship project early on was Incheon, um, Seoul Incheon Expressway. But as times passed, things got much more complicated and sophisticated. And three years ago, we established a new long-term strategy called Strategy 2030. It sets the course for ADB's long-term efforts to respond effectively to the Asia and the Pacific region's changing needs. Its operational priority three in particular relates to tackling climate change, building climate and disaster resilience and enhancing environmental sustainability. Strategy 2030 also stresses the need to promote innovative technologies and integrate solutions for our developing countries. Therefore, this operational priority three and the long-term strategy 2030 fit very well with advocating for the role of digital technologies in advancing climate action. Well, let me draw your attention to ADB's enhanced climate ambition since adoption of 20, strategy 2030. Back in 2018, when we set, set up the strategy, we set up an ambitious target of $80 billion of climate finance by 2030. But what we learned in the past three years is that the demands from the developing countries started to shift towards sectors such as urban, water, food security, which require much more financing in climate, especially in adaptation. So ADB recent, recently announced its plans to elevate its climate finance ambition to $100 billion by 2030. And of course, ADB also set its targets on aligning its operations with the Paris Agreement by 2023. And this is done to illustrate that ADB continues to be functioning as a climate bank of the Asia and the Pacific region. Now on the digital technology, this term is used as an umbrella term for a variety of technologies that involve digital data and processes. There is a broad landscape of digital technologies across various stages of technology development and deployment. And deployment in, in fact is probably even more important for our region than just the development. Digital technologies can provide opportunities for accelerating and enhancing actions to tackle climate change. However, before taking advantage of digital technology for climate action, there is a need to pay careful attention on how digital te technologies can be identified and applied to help countries enhance climate action in the most relevant way. So to assess the digital technology better, one can structure them in a framework of three progressive stages and classify them based on criterion. That includes an analysis of their level of technology development and timing of commercial breakthrough. As seen on this slide, under stage one, these are readily available and well-established technologies. And there's some obvious examples such as simple internet, mobile phones, databases, and remote sensing. It's hard to imagine life without any of these things functioning properly. Under stage two, these are digital technologies that are readily available, but have not been utilized to their full potential, especially in our region and the developing world. Digital technologies ranging from social media and applications to cloud computing fall under this stage. 
and stage two technologies hold huge potential in our region, given the high usage and growth rates of these technologies here. Under stage three, these are technologies that have very high potential, but are not yet ready to reach commercial breakthrough. These are the most advanced digital technologies, for example, artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things and big data. But before I got into uh, development business, I used to be a computer programmer in COBOL and Pascal. And for me, these new technologies are very difficult to understand. And I hope the young generations can move this agenda forward rapidly. To fur further illustrate this point, this slide provides some specific examples on how digital technologies at each of these three progressive stages can advance climate action, both in terms of climate mitigation and adaptation. The stage one technologies involve the range of technologies used in such, uh, such as satellite imagery and remote sensing in data collection to the production of resource efficiency through geographic information system under climate mitigation and the use of remote sensing to understand glacial lake outburst floods under climate adaptation. Stage two technologies feature social media as an enabler for climate mitigation and cloud computing as a tool for adapt adaptation planning. These tools are incredibly effective in mitigating climate induced disasters through early warning system, for example. And finally, stage three technologies represent future opportunities. This is about for our future generations. We are already seeing success in the use of big data and predictive analysis to optimize energy usage, directly contributing to enhancing climate action. The use of artificial intelligence and machine learning have demonstrated their benefits in predicting crop diseases and also traffic management and efficient movement of people as well. In the next two slides, I will share what the Asian Development Bank has been doing and our experience in working with the digital technologies to enable climate action and to fur further illustrate their benefits. First, smart grid support transition to electrical electrification through renewable energy sources. Transitioning from the current fossil fuel-based electric power and transport systems to renewables, such as wind, solar, and railway system for transport is one of the largest climate priorities. And these are not just good for climate issues, but for development and, and economic um, efficiency as well. The effective use of renewables will require investments in grid infrastructure and supply and demand management. Smart grids use digital technologies to route energy where, where it's needed and adjust prices to balance supply and demand. The Asian Development Bank has invested in several smart grid projects such as Nepal's Power Transmission and Distribution Efficiency Enhancement Project and Uzbekistan's Power Sector Reform Program. And of course, there are jobs. Digital jobs support climate sustainability. They can be performed remotely and they can help reduce emissions from less commuting and business travel. The increase in digital jobs is also evident from the COVID-19 pandemic. And obviously the future jobs will require complete digitalization. The Asian Development Bank supports the digital economy transition in many different ways. For example, investments in internet infrastructure, including Pacific submarine cables, satellite broadband, and new, tel and new telco operators. And we also support government's digital policies like the Philippines National Broadband Strategy and Vietnam's e-commerce strategy. Although the benefits of digital technologies are manifold, one dilemma is choosing the appropriate technologies to advance climate action. Alongside the need to look at national circumstances, that circumstances and priorities, there are two key parameters which define how effect, cost effective the digital technology is for a purpose for its purpose and evaluating its usability. For cost effectiveness, the marginal abatement cost curve can be used. 
the marginal abatement cost curve allows for comparison of the cost and emission reduction potential of different mitigation measures. Similarly, the marginal adaptation cost curve allows us to compare the cost effectiveness of various adaptation options. In terms of usability, there's this concept called multi-criteria analysis or MCA that can be used. Multi-criteria analysis is a decision-making tool that includes qualitative criteria, such as ease of lo local implementation, breadth of social and environmental benefits, and compatibility with current technology. The multi-criteria analysis includes qualitative criteria for ranking technologies and determining how appropriate they are for local context. Besides the need to collect, select the digital, the, to select the right technology, there are several other barriers to the uptake of such technologies and advancing climate action. These obstacles are, are pertinent in the Asia and the Pacific region, where it is very important important to recognize that the diverse nature of, of countries, both in terms of the size of economies, as well as their development status. Some of these barriers include the lack of basic digital technology infrastructure, such as insufficient internet coverage, low bandwidth leading to slow internet speed, unre unreliable electricity and sparse connectivity. These are, these are things that people living in the developed countries really take for granted, but in a lot of the developing world, some of the basic things are not taken care of yet. There are also financial barriers for digital technology and related services due to very high costs. And of course, there are regulatory barriers, including data protection and privacy issues. And finally, the upgrade barriers, such as sourcing of relevant raw materials or human resources, especially for stage three digital technology. And the sourcing of relevant raw materials is very important these days because of the supply chain disruption that's going on. These barriers make operationalizing digital technology in developing Asia very, very challenging. Therefore, careful planning and identification of key opportunities are needed to ensure that the role of the technology, digital technologies catalyzing climate action is recognized and the strategies to operationalize them are adopted. Some ideas for advancing their operationalization include maximizing the use of digital technologies at each stage to a specific stakeholder group and increasing the absorptive capacity of ADB's developing member countries and promoting knowledge sharing. And finally, some avenues that can help integrate and advance digital technologies include exploring more efficient use of private and public partnership projects to bring in the relevant and the latest technology, the knowledge and financial resources. Integrating digital technology into nationally determined contributions NDC under the Paris Agreement. And finally, integrating digital technologies into plans for green recovery. Now ADB continues to play a key role in incorporating digital technologies into its work to advance climate action. Our typical digital technology interventions include for loans and grants programs, we support the development of digital technologies applications and management information system. Under our non-sovereign or private sector operation, our typical focus is on telecommunication. And under our technical assistance grant program, Digital technology work typically covers preparation of pre-feasibility study, advisory reports on policies and regulation, and training and knowledge sharing. All these three things are very, very important, and especially the pre-feasibility studies, which will help develop more bankable projects that can be financed. To share some of the numbers we have, you can also see in the figure that in the last 10 years, ADB supported over 460 digitally enabled projects. And in 2020, one year alone, we considered that one out of six ADB projects had significant digital components. So before I end, let me reiterate that we have a broad 
landscape of digital technologies at various phases of de development and usage. Our developing countries can make use of these technologies to improve their efforts to climate mitigation and adaptation goals. It is important to build on lessons learned from digital technologies of existing projects and delve into important issues such as their scale of application, relative merits, cost effectiveness, ease of implementation and limitation. Finally, it is important to focus on operationalizing digital technologies based on realities of the issues on the ground, based on nationally uh, appropriate priorities and circumstances. I just recently returned from Glasgow on COP26 and there are lots of discussions going on and how to tackle climate in the most appropriate way so that we can leave this planet a much better place for our future generation. Obviously, we have a lot of work to do and we have to use every tool that we have, not just money, but important, most importantly, um, technical knowledge. And digital technology, I believe, is one of the most effective way of handling this and quantum leaping into the future in the right way. Well, I hope that the presentation can help the audience become much better informed about the role of the digital technology, especially in our developing world and advancing climate action and fostering green, inclusive and resilient recovery. Thank you very much. 네, 여러분 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Thank you very much. A big round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mr. Fum for your special lecture. 대해서 이야기 Yesterday and today, we're discussing digital transformation. Now, technology is advancing quickly, and uh, we are all wondering what kind of future is awaiting. We have this immediate, imme uh, imminent crisis of the climate change, and we can utilize technology to address climate crisis. And there are many considerations we need to make. And we can think about the value of smart grid technology. So these were the kinds of points that Mr. Um made in his presentation. Thank you very much.